Solaris was released on the Atari 2600 in 1986. By this point, you would think that the space-themed shooter games would have run its course, especially on the 2600. There were a lot fewer games being developed for the system, so why bother with another one of these, especially since this wasn't even a port. This game was made specifically for the 2600, so it was a fresh idea. But after all the space shooters that came out for the console by 1986, many of which were just rehashes of old ideas with little to nothing new to offer, was there really anything left in the tank? Was there any way to bring freshness to the genre? At least anything that the 2600 was capable of? Well, yeah, actually. So you get a map screen, which is an 8x6 grid, making up 48 sectors. You choose the sector on the map that you want to travel to, each of which has icons to represent its contents. It sounds like there's a lot to work with here, but then once you realize this is just one of 16 different quadrants, each one has four exits that leads you to another whole grid, so 16 times 48, eh, you do the math. Your ultimate goal is to find and enter the planet Solaris, which is the one that blinks. It may sound easy, but like I said, the map is huge, and not every area is accessible right away. You've got these blockades called star clusters, which you'll need to access these wormholes to get over them. The Federation planets are the areas you have to protect by wiping out all the enemies called Xylons from the nearby sectors. If they destroy the planet, then the whole quadrant turns into a red zone, which reverses your controls so left is right, up is down, etc. It can fuck your shit up. You can also refuel at these docking stations on the Federation planets. Just don't blow them up, because that'll turn the place into a red zone as well. Cylon planets are the ones that are occupied by the enemy. If you land on one, you can pick up friendly space cadets, which I'm guessing are POWs, which earn you extra points and lives. There's a variety of enemies in the game, too, that attack you in different ways, plus a bunch of rocks or meteors, I don't know, but it reminds me of asteroids, if it were in the first person. The controls are smooth as hell, everything feels very fluid, at least until you hit a red zone and all hell breaks loose, but that's the idea. The visuals are also great, the sprites and animation look good, and the backgrounds are fantastic, especially the takeoff part. The game is deep as hell, too. There's a lot of ground to cover, and you have to find keys to get to certain areas that are fended off by guardians. So it's anything but a linear walk in the park. And that leads to the game's only real caveat, is that it isn't a self-explanatory, pick-up-and-play type of game. So if you're looking for that kind of game, leave this one on the shelf for now. But if you want more bang for your buck, you can't go wrong with Solaris. There's a star man. Sky.